Welcome to this webinar of the Jerusalem Press Club, JPC, another one in a series, Israel is Alive and Kicking. This morning with Dr. Shikma Bressler on the Supreme Court and politics. Uh, the timing is perfect because as we speak, the Supreme Court is deliberating the question of whether a candidate who is charged with bribery, fraud, and breach of trust can form a government. Uh, Dr. Shikma Bressler is a researcher at the Faculty of Physics, Department of Particle Physics and Astrophysics at the Weizmann Institute. She is a member of ATLAS collaboration at CERN, the prestigious European Organization for Nuclear Research in Switzerland. And recently she organized and has been active in uh, protest activities against the political deal the Supreme Court is deliberating uh, just now. Uh, Dr. Bursler will start with a short introduction and then we'll open up for Q&A. Dr. Bursler, thanks for joining us. I understand that you are on the scene, you know, in Jerusalem. Yeah, we are here um, close to the Knesset, um, watching together the discussion from the Supreme Court. And I, I want to apologize in advance. I'm not used to discuss these topics in English, so I might lack some of the necessary terminology. I'll do my best to explain. Um, okay. So, so tell us, tell us, tell us first what made you leave the comfort of your lab at Weizmann Institute and go out to the streets. So I think that uh, for several years now. Um, our democracy is being uh, slowly, slowly uh, transitioning or, or being transitioned or forced to move into something which is um, getting farther and farther away from being a democracy towards some kind of uh, dictatorship or, or something like that. Uh, it's been like that for a while, you know, this... Um, uh, one important point of uh, separation of powers in democracy and the importance of uh, media and so on, all of that are uh, questionable uh, now. Um, and and this, this is done over many, many years. Um, and many people are protesting against that for years now. What happened recently was that um, along with the coronavirus, um, these actions were... Uh, become a lot more uh, visible, a lot more violent, a lot more pronounced. Uh, like, for example, uh, a couple of days, literally a couple of days before uh, Netanyahu trial was supposed to start, uh, he decided to lock down or almost lock down the, um, uh, the courts. And then a couple of days later, because of the unstable and unclear political situation here, um, they actually um, paralyzed completely the, the Knesset in the middle of the corona crisis, where it's super important that the Knesset will supervise what the, the um, government decide to do. And they completely paralyzed it by uh, refusing to elect new heads for the Knesset and by uh, refusing to form uh, the Knesset uh, parliament committees, which are supposed to, um, to supervise. And uh, I think what brought it, first of all, it's not just myself, but it was myself and my, my brothers, my three brothers. Uh, what brought us out was that um, we were sitting at, uh, at our parents' house discussing, you know, what will be next. And uh, we said, uh, I think that I was, I said, uh, so I'm uh, now going to, to lock down the courts just to prevent or to make sure that the will, uh, trial will not start. And then my dad said, no, it's, I mean, it's impossible. And then the same night, in the middle of the night, in the dark, darkness, like really like, uh, like safe, they really locked it down. And then what happened was that we really identified this, um, this uh, red line uh, uh, just before it happened. And it was clear to all of us that this is a red line. And uh, unlike, you know, smoothly, smooth transition and smooth uh, um, uh, loss of, of democracy. This was a very uh, um, clear cut, very clear red line that we were able to identify in advance. Um, and then uh, some um, uh, journalists asked, uh, called people to come to the Rabin Square at, uh, at Tel Aviv to protest with, uh, 
black flags and, and we went. And then when they also shut or paralyzed the Knesset, we said, okay, it's, it's enough. We go, we take our car, we take black flags and go to Jerusalem. And we talked with uh, several close friends who were all uh, uh, immediately join us. And each one has his own uh, uh, group of people connected to social, all kinds of social media. And the next day when we went, uh, we left the, 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 from my, my house and we said, that, okay, if, if there will be 20 cars, it will be very good. And we ended up uh, with over a thousand cars uh, going to Jerusalem, to the Knesset, and then the police stopped us and blocked us uh, aggressively and unjustfully because we were not um, uh, disturbing anything while driving. And uh, this brought our activity into the attention and uh, many, many people joined since then. And I think that this is what happened. And uh, I mean, we were, we were going out because it was clear to us that there are things that can be done and if these things are done at, at the moment that we ask them to be, we thought they should be done. And, and we, we demanded three things. Demanded is a strange word, but we, we thought that three things should happen. The first, that the new head of uh, the Knesset will be elected. Um, there was um, a rule from our prime court that said that the new uh, head of the Knesset should be elected. And uh, they simply refused to do it, simply went against the, um, the rule of our prime cost, which for me means going against the, um, any legitimate uh, uh, action. Uh, so we, we said that they should elect a new head of the parliament, a new head for the class uh, today, and they should form the committees supervise the um, the actions of the, the government and they, they should change the basic law of the government what we call um, to change it to make sure that uh, a person with such severe uh, uh, charges like a real criminal defendant will not be able to form a government in the state of Israel uh, period. And by the way, this is the, um, uh, what will be discussed today in the Supreme Court, whether a person with a criminal defendant can be given the, the credit to build the government. So, so what, is your, what, is your, what is your expectation from the court today, that they will uh, rule that uh, Netanyahu cannot form the government? So first of all, I want to say that for me, and for the people uh, I am discussing with, this is not even a question for uh, that. You know, in in um, in a moral world, in a moral democracy like Israel should be and used to be, such a question, which is so trivial, should not even be discussed in the Supreme Court. In the sense that it's not a question of legal legality, but it's a question of morality. Uh, one cannot afford to have at uh, the top um, um, position in your state, a person whom you cannot uh, uh, look your, up, your eyes up to. You cannot, uh, you cannot uh, I mean, I have, I have five girls. I cannot educate them uh, to be good citizens if uh, the, the, the prime minister is uh, facing such severe charges, and by the way, some of them he already, um, I mean, he he said that he did that, he just doesn't think that this is a crime. So uh, I think that from the point of view of, of moral morality and not legality, um, this should be, you know, it's as clear as, as daylight to me and to the people I'm discussing with. And today what I hope is that our um, uh, uh, supreme judges or the judges in the Supreme Court will have um, the uh, cleanest um, atmosphere to judge based on what they think is justice and right and will be able to ignore all the violent um, threats that they are facing directly from Netanyahu and, and while saying directly from Netanyahu, I also refer to all the people, you know, his, his low-level troops. Um, and, and, he, and they are facing uh, both personal uh, threats to their houses, to their kids, and so on, 
and also directly from Netanyahu by saying as if, uh, if they will judge or rule against him, they will be the one to blame for going for the fourth election, which is a complete, complete lie. So I hope that they will, you know, just be able to uh, rule according to, to justice. Yeah, but you ask them, you ask the, the court to rule according to morality and values, and the court should rule according to the law. And the law says that uh, the prime minister can uh, actually can do it. So no, why, no, 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 because why the law, because the, the, the problem is that there is no clear law about it, right? There is no law about whether a person who is facing criminal uh, uh, charges can form a new government. The rules say that a, a, an active prime minister can stay in office if he has been uh, put to trial while being in office. And the reason for that is uh, that if he needs to resign, then the entire government resign. But again, I'm not an expert in uh, legal rights. I'm not an expert in politics. I'm an expert in physics. Uh, and my, um, my um, you know, what guides me is, uh, is, as I said, what I call morality and not legal. And uh, for, therefore, I'm not, I know, I'm, I'm, I'm not envying in any of the Supreme, uh, of the judges in the Supreme Court today. They are facing a very difficult uh, question. They, they need to decide according to what they think is right. There is no clear cut on, on the legal uh, right here. This is the reason that I thought that such thing should not be uh, even, you know, brought to the, uh, you know, to the, to the table and, and, and the doors of the, crime, the Supreme Court. Um, but you know, but you know uh, Dr. Bressler, uh, there were elections on the three, three actually. Uh, and uh, the last one was after uh, Mr. Netanyahu has been indicted with these uh, charges and uh, more people uh, than less uh, of the Israelis decided that they want him to be their prime minister. So you want Why do you say that? Why do you say that? Because... We had, 62, we had 62 chairs out of 120, which is more than 50% of the people voted really against having Netanyahu. And also out of the, and I also remind you, so, so clearly more than half, uh, more than half were against uh, uh, allowing a person with such severe um, uh, criminal accusations to be a prime minister here. This is, this is the clearest thing. The best vote, the best, uh, you know, thing one can say that 62 out of 120 uh, sit in the Knesset were grouped against this. And I also want to add and remind us all that in Israel there is no, we do not elect directly a prime minister. We elect a, a party. Okay. And also within the Likud party, which got, uh, I don't remember, something like 30, something uh, chill, so uh, around, let's say, 25 or 30, when there was election to whom will, will uh, lead this uh, this um, um, uh, party, then only 70% or so of the people were electing Netanyahu. So if you take 25% or 30% of the population and uh, multiply it by the 70%, you'll see that those who voted directly for Netanyahu are less than that. And everything else that is being said is a pure spin, which uh, I do not accept. Uh, don't you uh, aren't you afraid that if the if the court rules uh, according to what you suggest, uh, there will be a backlash from the people, and uh, and uh, eventually there will be legislation that will limit the court's uh, power. So I'll answer in two levels. First of all, uh, what will happen if? I don't know. I do know that if you show weakness to um, people like uh, people who are willing to take this country into these uh, black areas and black darkness, which we are led into, 
um, any weakness shown by anyone along the way, and there are tons of examples so far, will be later completely um, um, uh, destroyed. So to answer directly to your question, I believe that if uh, uh, the Supreme Court will rule against uh, what is uh, morally right, uh, the next uh, thing to be destroyed here in Israel is the Supreme Court and the uh, um, and the legal system. We saw it with the uh, rules of the head of the, the police. We saw it with all the prosecution system in Israel. We see it, by the way, with the entire Likud party. Whoever uh, try to, you know, show some. Um, 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 threat to some extent the leadership of Netanyahu is completely washed down. So there is nothing left of the, the Likud party. It's a group of, uh, of basically, uh, you know, excellent people who has zero meaning in, in the Israeli uh, policy. And against that stand just uh, one, um, one one person who is faced severe trial, and in order to avoid that, is uh, willing to destroy whatever you know come along the way, not even against him. So I think that today, with the decisions that will be made, made decisions that will be made uh, today and tomorrow, the, the Supreme Court is actually uh, ruling also for the future of the uh, of the legal system in Israel after the destruction, the active destruction of the. Um, of the Knesset after the active destruction of the meaning of the government system. Uh, the next to be, and after a complete destruction of media, by the way, the next, uh, the last uh, um, thing in line is the legal system, which is actually ruling, I think, for its own uh, breath today. And on the question regarding the question of the black backslash, I think that no. I think that there is a majority in Israel, as was uh, remembered in the last election, uh, that the majority of people in Israel are against having such uh, uh, criminal defendants as our prime minister. And I believe that the attempt to say something different is uh, only there to threaten us, and I'm, I'm not afraid of it. We will uh, go out to the streets and make sure that we get the same majority to, to form a um, um, morality or morally right uh, government. Uh, at 11 o'clock, we're going to host uh, Dr. Gadi Tao, who will probably say, and I dare uh, uh, quote him even before he said it, that there's the, uh, the elite that, like yourself, that uh, wouldn't accept the uh, the decision of the people in the ballots, and they go to the Supreme Court, which is the same elite, uh, to overrule the the will of the people. So we will say that, and he will be wrong. I don't see a problem with that. He will be uh, lying to your face, probably, and he will be wrong. It's as simple as that. I mean, uh, the no, right-wing parties rule in Israel for 40 years, and we have never uh, went against any of that. So it's, uh, we do accept the majority. I do accept the majority. By the way, I am on the majority, as I said. 62 uh, seats out of 120 is the majority. And this one was elected, and the only thing on the table during those elections was uh, yes or no for the question of having uh, such uh, a person with such severe accusations uh, um, as our uh, prime minister. And the majority voted against that. And everyone who says something else is uh, misleading. As simple as that. Well, well uh, let me say something else, because you stick to the, uh, to the results of the, of the last elections. And in the meantime, something happened. And that is a uh, Gantz with blue and, uh, and white. A uh, Gantz and Ashkenazi moved in, and are willing to join Netanyahu. And uh, recent polls show that the majority of Israelis support it, uh, probably because of the Corona crisis. So you are not in the majority anymore. 
No, 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 no. As I said, the real, the only real call I can uh, refer to is the last election. If you want a new real call, have a new election. I'm not afraid of that. I'm sure that we are going to win. According to the polls, if there were fourth election now, uh, Likud under Netanyahu would get some 40 mandates. So, so you're not afraid that what, what no, you're doing You know what? You know why? You know why? Why is because that? there is no um, um, and no one who knows better that if this is indeed the case, Netanyahu would have gone to election today. He would have hesitated, he wouldn't have wait, he would have gone and do the election today. And since he doesn't, I believe that him himself does not believe to this poll and he has a good reason to. He was uh, able to, um, to put this, uh, this country under such a miserable condition during the last days uh, with this huge amount of unemployed people, this uh, huge loss of the uh, finance situation. I believe that what we see, and, and besides, as I said, if he would thought that he can win the election today, he would have gone to the election yesterday. It's as simple as that. This is what he did the last three times. Nothing stops him from going to election, and he can do it today. And the fact that he doesn't do it is a, is a clear sign to let's have a new poll, but a real one in an election. There's a question, a simple question. Isn't a, a person uh, innocent until proven guilty? Yes, but he needs to be put to trial in that. And if he if he's uh, you know stopping the courts overnight in the middle of the night, and if he's uh, escaping and avoiding his uh, his trials, and what would you do? I mean, I I fully agree that people this person is innocent until proven guilty. But what happened if this if this person during that time try start and change the the um, change the, the entire system. I mean, what, what happens then? What would you do? So they, yeah, they drag us here. There's a date. Uh, there, was there, was also, there was also a date. There was also a date in March, and the courts were blocked in the middle of the night. The courts were blocked in the middle of the night, and whatever was done since then was to try and destroy the legitimacy of, uh, of, the, of the system. So yes, so he is innocent until proven otherwise. But this, um, um, but this trial should start. And you know, everything is starting to open in Israel. So my uh, younger kids are going to school already today. You know what did not open yet? And IKEA is open. You know what is not open yet? The courts. And this is ridiculous. So yeah, so people are innocent as long as proven guilty. As long as everybody is playing by the same um, by the same rules, but someone here ch try to change the rules, try to change the um, the instructions, try to change the system. Um, so you know, democracy dies quietly, as I said, because it's really hard to put your to place your fingers, and because when you look at everything with a magnifying glass, you know you can come up with uh, arguments. Uh, pro and con arguments, but if you just take one step back and look at everything from you know from from above, and you look at what happened here in the last couple of years and the direction that we are heading, you see that what we are going through is a transition from uh, a democracy to a dictatorship, and this is crystal clear. As I said, there is no um, meaningful government. No meaningful government, just one person who even at you know at his top record holds like five different uh, um, minister um, 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 I don't know offices. Uh, I'll ask you who is our minister of something. Uh, there is a chance that you will not even know. And and worse than that, I'll ask you what did he do in office, and the answer will be uh, probably nothing. Uh, there is no active, uh, uh, no uh, you know, active but with real uh, teeth um, uh, parliament, and this is even being now with all this um, coalition agreement that they are about to sign, even uh, more actively being damaged and destroyed, and uh, and all the levels of our legal system, as I said, from the police to the um, 
um, attorneys and so on, all of them uh, are under threat all the time. The media is lost for a long time now. I mean, if you're here today, this is one of the most important days in Israel democracy, in Israel history. And, uh, and, and this is barely discussed with, with experts. So you don't see in our, uh, in our um, rush hour or, or uh, let's say the eight o'clock uh, news, you don't see real low people coming to explain what's going on. You see only those uh, so-called uh, uh, reporters who just, you know, speaks out what they hear from Balfour, uh, uh, explain why this and that, but you don't see any real experts. You don't get, uh, you know, people from abroad, let's say with no or with less uh, um, internal Israeli ambitions to come and say how this is look like. You don't see uh, Netanyahu answering the questions of any reporters. You do hear about people coming to be interviewed uh, and the microphones are being uh, switched off the moment that they ask the tough questions. You don't see, I mean, so this is, um, um, all the signs are there. All the signs are there. Of course, everything is within uh, low, low, because uh, low in many, many, many times come, comes, uh, you know, posteriorly. You cannot know, you cannot believe a priori that you will be facing such a situation. So no one, set a rule for that and and uh and afterwards i mean it's it's too late what we are afraid is that we wake up one day in a condition where the regime let's say is so different than a democracy that you cannot you know turn the wheel back and what, just just because you can't right what 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 kind of reactions do you get uh, from from the public in general and from your peers in uh, in academy? So obviously, so I'm, I'm I think that I'm lucky because I'm not uh, connected to almost any social media. I only have a Facebook account, which was uh, completely abandoned until I uh, reopened recently, just to uh, publish what we are doing. So I don't read any talkbacks, and I don't read uh, Twitter nasty comments. I'm sure that they are there, but I, I'm not um, exposed to that. Uh, luckily, uh, from my uh, not just my peers, but from everyone. I mean, also from, by the way, in, in our group of, of, of friends, those who, who are active and run this uh, thing, um, we have people that voted to parties from the entire um, uh, political arc, let's say. It's not a question of, um, it's not a question of uh, left wing or I think we lost you. I think it's really a question of. Yeah, it seems like we, we, we're having problems uh, hearing you well. But can you see me? Is it better now? Yeah, we can see you, but we were interested in what you're saying as well. Uh, no, I'm saying I'm saying I can speak louder if it's not. I think it's important. Yeah, say say again what you just said. Uh, try to. I'm say saying it. that in our close group of people, we have people that voted to all uh, to parties from the entire political arc. It's not a question of uh, right wing or left wing, as people may want to to make it appear, which is a complete lie against. It's a question of uh, you know black versus white darkness versus uh, daylight or something like that. Uh, we get excellent, I mean, our, the, the people who were the first to come and speak in, in the protest we were organizing were um, people pretty much or very much identified or, or you know, former, former ministers in the right wing uh, government. So people like uh, Dan Merido, who was uh, um, the, the Minister of, of Law in the government that were fought by the Likud party. And people like uh, Bugi Elon, who was uh, the Minister of Defense in Netanyahu's government. So uh, this is not a question of, of left and right. This is not a question of being extremist uh, in one direction or the other. It really is a question of the democracy 
against the dictatorship. And uh, I mean, you are, you are showing it to the entire world, I hope. So yes. people should know that this is what we have on stake, on stake here. Uh, whether we are going in the direction of countries like Hungary, like Poland, like, uh, I don't know, like Turkey and so on, or whether we will stay what we always claimed and were proud to be uh, the only democracy in the Middle East. And this is what we have today on, on stake. And the answer, unfortunately, is very uh, unclear to me. And, uh, and, and this is a, it's not just a slippery uh, slope, but, um, but it's a very, very, very dangerous slippery slope. Okay. Uh, Dr. Yeah. Shikma, Dr. Shikma Bersa, thank you for being with us uh, this morning. And thank you all for being with us. Stay tuned to our next webinar at 11, less than half an hour ago uh, from now with uh, Dr. Gadi Tao, who will present a totally different opinion on the issue. And on Tuesday, 4 p.m., we'll host constitutional expert, Professor Susan Avot, who will give a general analysis on the Supreme Court deliberation. Thank you all for being with us. Thank you.